Hello, and welcome to week 12 of English 111. This week, you're going to be reading in the Bedford Researcher, chapters 11 and 12, found on pages 203 through 229. You're going to only have two assignments, but these will take a bit of time, so make sure you spend time, um, you put aside time to work on them. First, you're going to start off by doing two journal entries that will help you really think about the thesis you're going to have, the main point you're going to have in your paper, and how you're going to think about your argument for your paper. Um, you're also going to be developing, you're going to be analyzing your sources with an annotated bibliography. So your first journal entry is going to help you think about developing your thesis statement. Now the thesis statement is the main idea, um, the main thing you're solving for and proving in your paper. And it needs to be focused and about a sentence long. It's found usually at the end of the first paragraph of your paper. Begin by doing your journal entry by thinking about what your research question is. Um, then write down what your position statement is. That's what we worked on last week. Then I'd like you to write down what your purpose is for writing your paper. Not um, Think about like why, why you want to write this paper. Um, also, um, obviously to fulfill your grade requirements, but also what good does your paper do? What what um, what does it contribute um, to? Uh, if someone reads it, what will they gain? Uh, what do you gain by writing it? Um, then I want you to look at the, the next um, point where you think about what you want your thesis to, to reflect um, in regards to the needs, interests, values, and beliefs of your readers. One way to think about this is when some readers read a, um, on a certain topic, um, they, they form an immediate bias. So you want to make sure if you're talking about divorce, you don't make it really, uh, and someone has maybe religious views against divorce, you don't want to, to um, come across um, as if um, divorce is the only answer um, and that everything you're writing is the absolute fact. You want to you write your paper without bias, and this is a way to test that. Um, Next thing I want you to think about is what you want your readers to do when they read your paper. And there's some sample thesis, um, thesis statements that address these different types on page 206 of the Bedford Researcher. Um, you, you can either have your, your, um, your readers learn about something or change their attitudes or beliefs about something, or they can finish reading your paper and want to take action on something. Um, so make sure you look at um, the sample research, the sample thesis statements on page 206 to really see how this is done. Um, also, you want to understand, um, um, based on all this information that you've gathered, then you want to draft a thesis statement. Um, and there's some really great um, ideas on how to do so found on page 205. Um, really just finding the key ideas that you've put forward in your position statement. Um, the key words and the argument um, and making sure you draft it in a way that has specific information so the reader really clearly understands specifically what you're talking about, what time range you're talking about, or what um, specific focus that you're talking about in regards to an issue. Um, just be as specific as possible. Um, then finally, I want you to look at, um, think about how your readers are likely to respond to your thesis. Um, you know, what questions they might raise, what objections they might raise, um, and then really refocus your thesis statement. And there's lots of information on this found on page 207, and there's some sample refocus thesis statements on page 208. So please take a look at that. All right, your second journal entry is going to have to do with developing your argument um, and how you can support your thesis statement. So the first, after you've developed a good um, thesis statement, um, you really want to think about, um, and this, this, uh, this is in regards to chapter 12 of the Bedford Researcher, you really want to think about um, what are the subtopics that you could write about in order to prove your thesis? Um, what are the um, parts of the topic you're talking about that you could use as examples to prove your thesis? Then I want you to think about the sources that you're working very closely with this week um, to identify relevant evidence um, and then list the evidence below each reason. 
So you might need to review your sources to locate additional evidence, and you might even realize that you don't have enough evidence. You might have to go back and do some more research. Then you want to determine whether you're relying too heavily on a single source or a single type of evidence. Maybe you keep quoting one source throughout the whole paper. That's not a good way to write a research paper. You need several different sources that you're referring to. Also, you want to make sure you're not just using one type of evidence. Um, don't just use websites. Um, everyone has to use academic articles, um, but don't just use those too. If you maybe find a book or a, a research paper, try to give some variety in the sources that you're using. All right, finally, I want to talk to you briefly about your annotated bibliography, which is not due on the 22nd, it's due on the 29th. I apologize about having the wrong date on here. So, for your annotated bibliography, you need to use at least four sources. It needs to be approximately three to four pages, and it needs to be in MLA format. For this assignment, you're going to be compiling an annotated bibliography of, of, of at least four sources that are related to the topic you've chosen to write your research paper on. An annotated bibliography is a list of citations to books, articles, and other resources. Each citation is followed by a brief descriptive and evaluative paragraph, which is called the annotation. The purpose of the annotation is to inform the reader of the relevance, accuracy, and quality of the sources cited. So here's the process. First of all, you're going to identify four sources you feel are relevant to your research topic. Ideally, these are going to be um, sources that you feel like you're going to write from in your actual research paper. Second, you're going to create citations for each source in MLA format. Remember to refer to Chapter 21 in the Bedford Researcher to, to understand how to um, cite a source. It's very important that you know how to correctly cite a source because if you do not, if you do not, um, if you do not correctly cite the source, you will lose a fourth of the credit for that source. So the citation needs to be perfect. If it requires you to put a period at the end of um, the author's last name, comma, first name, you need to put that period there. So remember to review Chapter 21 of the Bedford Researcher for detailed descriptions on how to do citation. Then, once you've made your citation, then you want to write a concise annotation that summarizes the central theme and scope of your sources. These annotations should include three or more sentences that evaluate the authority, background, and education of the author. So what, what have they done to show you that they, to prove their ethos, right, to show that they're, they're educated in the field they're speaking about, maybe they've written other books. Um, you should comment on the intended audience. For whom was it written? What skill level or education must a reader have? You want to compare or contrast this work with others that you've cited. You also want to discuss how this work explains your selected topic. What perspective on your topic does this work provide? Now I have here a sample annotation. Um, this is this is one um, of what you would be writing. With, would, you would have four annotations. So this is the, one of those. Um, the first thing you're going to have in your paper is the actual annotation. Um, remember to see Chapter 21 of the Bedford Researcher. Um, uh, this shows an example of last name, first name, the article title, which is Souls on Ice. Notice there's a period before the quotations end. Um, Mother Jones is the name of the journal where this article appeared, and it's underlined. You can either underline it or italicize it. It was found in the July-August issue, which was published in 2006, um, and the pages where it's found is pages 39 to 45. Now here I have an example of a summary. This is a good summary. It's a longer summary of an article, the one that was just cited. I'd like you to review it and see um, as an example of how to create an accurate summary of a source. Um, one of the things that this writer really does well is um, they've written an, an objective and accurate summary. That means they do not insert their opinions when they write about the source. That's very important. Um, it's also clear what the thesis is in this article. Um, and the key points that are being made in the article. 
the annotated bibliography has a third part, and that's your evaluation. Um, for this, you need to talk about um, why you've chosen the article um, and why you find it to be reliable. Um, so this is where you establish who the author is and why they have the um, authority to talk about the subject. Um, evaluations can discuss the reliability, relevance, currency, logic, style, and more. Evaluations don't have to be 100% positive. It's okay if you don't totally like the article or the book. But um, they should show that the source has enough strength to make it worthwhile for the others to read and use. So if you really, really dislike an article, do not write an annotation about it. But it's okay if you like it 75%, okay? Finally, you're going to write a response. This is where you're going to write an informal response that describes how the source affected your own opinions and how it relates to what you are writing about. All right, so your annotated bibliography is due a week from, from today, from Sunday. It'll be due um, on, um, on the 29th. So uh, 28th, sorry, I couldn't do my math fast enough. Uh, I look forward to seeing you guys online. There is no discussion forum this week, just journal entries and your annotated bibliography. Have a great week.